Hey folks, and how's it going? Today we're looking at bubble sort. It's the second last of the obstacles, and it is one of the hardest ones I've come across so far. If you know what a bubble sort is, it'll be quite familiar to you. You basically have a string or a little list, an array of numbers, and you want it to read out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. As you can see, 9 shouldn't be there. We know we need a smaller number, so we go swap. And then we move to the next one. 9 is in the wrong position, so we say swap, okay? And then you, you can't move back, you have to move forward. Make it swap. Next. Make that swap as well. Next. You can see the 9 is slowly moving towards the front, okay? Or the top of the list. Some people call this a sink sort. Some people call this the worst, crappiest sort mechanism known to mankind. And uh, it's trivially simple and it's really super inefficient. Now, I'm just going to go forward one more time. Next, get the four down. Next. And then as you can see, the nine has made it to the top, okay? So we go back to the beginning. Let's get the one, okay? Five and eight, that's good. Swap, get the three moving to the left-hand side. See the way the eight is making its way forward. So you eventually do that, and it can take, uh, I don't know, maybe, could take as little as 30 clicks, um, maybe as many as 90. And you have a button here that says keep sorting. And when this thing changes, uh, you've done it. So let's have a quick look and see what we get when we scan it. I've already done this, by the way. I just want to show you what you, uh, what you would encounter. There we go. So as you can see, you don't get an awful lot. You have a swap and the next button, but where are all the numbers? So we can just say, um, we want that and we want that. We also want that because that's our flag to keep sorting. But we need, um, we need something else, right? There we go, nearly at maximum. Unfiltering. We don't need some of that stuff there. We don't need that. Okay, so there's our list of numbers. Okay. This is the bubble. If you click on that, you see the way it's called the bubble? Yeah. We want the bubble. So you'd need to take that, okay? We don't want the inner text because the inner text changes continuously. And we don't want the XPath either, okay? So, how do we access the numbers inside? All right? Well, that's actually a little bit of a different, a little bit of a challenge. And we need to use the constraint index. I actually had a bunch of screenshots from the manual open, but um, unfortunately I lost them last night. Um, no, hang on. Uh, that's creating wild statements, I needed to look up the uh, maximum repetitions. What else did we have? Um, yeah, okay. So there's a few more things that I had screenshotted and are now missing. Like that. So let's just cancel that and I'll show you what I created. So there's the bubble and uh, we took the class name as bubble. Number one and number two, now these change every single time you click next. So once we've specifically referred to the bubble, how do we point to the two things inside it? This is, this is the challenge, okay? We use constraint index. Like when something is dynamic and moving around, we need to use constraint index. And there's just constraint index two, okay? Now you might be wondering, why is the class behavior, the scrolling behavior in there saying none? Well, that's because um, when it originally worked, it was jumping around because it was doing scrolling. And I think it was scrolling to the top by default. So I just put the scrolling behavior none on all of the buttons, okay? So it wouldn't jump around too much. Um, I don't think I need it on that one, but I'm going to 
put it on there anyway. I, I'm almost certain I don't need it, but I want to put it on there anyway. So that's the, the module. And that's the real learning point there. When you've got a, like a finger pointing at a list of numbers, and those numbers are changing all the time, point to the bubble and then use constraint index within those numbers. So let's close that off and have a quick look at the actual uh, process. I think I already have it open. Let's close off some of this. So it's not fully finished. So does there verify? Okay. So we have a while loop. We just want to keep going and going and going. Okay. And I think I had to put, yeah, I put maximum repetitions on this was a hundred because I found even at 50, I was running out. And there's probably a mathematically clever way of figuring out maximum number of repetitions, but I literally guessed at a hundred. So we do a while loop. Okay. And the condition is keep sorting is visible. And we just do that and we say, the, because it's a link div, we say uh, inner text, keep sorting, verify it. In other words, we need to keep going. And if we do see that, then we buffer both bubbles, num both bubbles, all right, both numbers in the bubble. We pull the inner text into number one and number two. So here's our condition. Number one is greater than number two. If that's true, if the, first, the number on the left is bigger than the number on the right, we obviously need to swap that, don't we? Well, then we click on the swap button. And then we click on the next button. And then because we've moved the head forward, we need to um, rebuffer those numbers. I'm not entirely certain that's true because I've got that up here. So maybe we could try and maybe disable that. But I know it's running right now as is. So there's your if, there's your then. If you don't need to do swapping, you just click on next. Okay. And then I put a weight in here because this blue bubble, it actually has to move and it takes a little bit of time to move forward. There's probably a clever way of doing it, basically saying, you know, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So a bit of a hack, making it manually weight. But let's give it a shot, okay? Let's, uh, there we go. Give it a go, see what happens. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> Personally, I like it. And, you know, I think it's a bit slow. So let's just... See what happens. Try it again, okay? That's a lot better, isn't it? So keep an eye on that too. You'll notice it's sinking. This is why it's called a sink sort. Cool. All right, guys and girls, uh, happy to show you that one. Personally, I thought this was quite a challenge. If you like it, give it a comment, a like, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, helps the channel out a lot. It costs you nothing. Uh, comment below as well. That'd be fantastic. All right, guys. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.